A repeated measures ANOVA is one in which you have a within subject independent variable, which means that you have the same participants in each level of the independent variable. So for example, in these quizzes, we have five different quizzes here, say they were taking over the course of a term, and each participant completed each one of these quizzes. So the same participant is in each level of quiz. This is a within subject factor or a within subjects independent variable. Um, it's also called a repeated measure. This is in contrast to a between subjects factor, um, something like gender, where the same participant cannot be both um, group one and two in gender. There's only one group that they can be in. So essentially for a between subjects factor, you're going to have one variable with the groups listed um, down into one variable. And with a within subject um, variable, you're going to have your levels in different columns. So you're going to have multiple variables that you need to deal with. So I'm going to do a repeated measures ANOVA. To do this, you go to Analyze, General Linear Model, and then Repeated Measures. This will bring up a slightly different dialog box. And I'm only going to deal with the top part of this box. This bottom part is when you have multiple dependent variables. So we are just going to look at this top part. So because these quizzes occurred over time, repeated measure, your repeated measure is often called time. You could also call it quizzes or whatever you like to make it understandable. The number of levels that we have um, correspond to the number of variables that we have. So we have five different quizzes. So I add five and I add it to the box. So this is the name of our variable and how many levels it has. Once you finish that, you can press define. And SPSS will bring up this same dialog box, but it will have five variables listed because it knows that in order to have a within subject variable, if you've set up your data properly, you should have five different variables that correspond to each level. So your job is to make sure that the variables are entered in the correct order. So the first quiz in time or the first measure in time will be first all the way up to the last level. Okay, so I'm going to request plots for time by adding time to the horizontal axis and add and then press continue. And in options, I'm going to request three different things, descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size and observed power. Because we have only a within subject uh, independent variable, we do not need homogeneity vari variance test. This is for when you have a between subjects factor. For a within subject factor, you need a test of sphericity, but SPSS will automatically output that test. So press continue and then press OK. Up at the top, for a within subjects factor, you're given a list of the levels and how they correspond to the variables. So this is your chance to check to make sure that you've inputted them correctly. Next, you get your descriptive statistics, means and standard deviation for each level. Your multivariate test, which um, for a simple one-way multi, for a simple one-way repeated measures ANOVA, we are going to ignore this table. After this, you get a Mockley's test of sphericity. This is interpreted in the exact same way as homogeneity of variance. It's only called in it's. It's called sphericity now because it includes variances and covariances. So it's a slightly different test, but it's interpreted in the exact same way. So here we have the effect of time and it's significant, which means that we reject the null hypothesis, which means we do not have sphericity. So that means that our variances and covariances cannot be assumed to be equal. This affects which row in the table we read, similar to um, an independent samples t-test. In general, in this class, if, you're, if you have a significant value here, you'll use greenhouse geyser in the table. And if it's not significant, 
you can use the sphericity assumed line. So the next table is our test of within subjects effects. And we can just simply read across the greenhouse geyser line to find our values. Our significance is 0 0.037, which is less than 0 0.05, which means that we do have a significant effect. Because our effect is significant, and because there's more than two levels, it means that we have to do a post hoc test. So this is an omnibus test, which looks for some sort of significant difference somewhere between all of the levels of time, but we don't know exactly where. In order to figure out exactly where, you have to do post hoc tests. After that, you will get the test of within subject contrast. SPSS automatically requests this because you have a repeated measure. So generally a repeated measure um, is, uh, has some sort of time element. So you, it's, it means that it's an ordinal variable, which, is, um, which means that you can do a linear trend analysis. Looking at this, we can see that uh, the linear trend is not significant, but it appears that there is a significant quadratic trend. After that, we get a table for test of between subject effects. And because we don't have any between subject effects, we can ignore this table. You would only have to look at this table if you included a between subjects independent variable, something like gender. And then we get our plot. So because our effect was significant and we have more than two levels, I'm going to show you how to do post hoc test. To do this, you go to general linear model, repeated measures, back into the same thing. You leave everything the same. And then you click the options box. So it's actually not in the post hoc box because the post hoc box is always for between subjects independent variables. You need to look for the estimated marginal means or the EM means. Um, options for a within subjects independent variable. So to request post hoc test, you select time, you move it over to this box and you click main effects, and then you request Bonferroni. We're always going to be requesting Bonferroni for within subjects factors. Then you press continue and then OK. The only difference with this output will be this estimated marginal means area. First, it gives you the means, and then it will do pairwise comparisons between each of the levels of time. And looking down the significance uh, column, you can try and figure out the pattern of uh, significance. So you can see here, this is significant, this is significant, uh, this is repeated, repeated, and there's nothing else. So it seems that four time, quiz one, is significantly different from quiz two and significantly different from quiz three, but not significantly different from four and five, and none of the other ones are significantly different from each other. So if we go down to the plot, we can see that it's this point is significantly different from both of these two points, and there's no other significant pairwise comparisons.